The 2022 MX-5 Miata from Mazda is going to be getting a refresh and they have finally given us a couple glimpses of what it's going to look like. We're at Saudi Arabia's Mazda page and they're showing off the new MX-5 and they've been doing it for a few days now. And so I put together these two images, stitched them together through some Photoshop action and we're going to see if we can find any differences between the ND2, which was well loved and revered and is a gorgeous looking vehicle and see if there's any differences, at least from what we can see so far with this new ND3 model for 2022. So doing my best to kind of stitch this together. We do have some missing pieces here. If I were to line these up perfectly, there would be some shortening of the vehicle. So I just left this big black bar in the middle, but it looks like we have some maybe glossy black wheels over these wheels on the Grand Touring version. The taillights look to be exactly the same, which is kind of a disappointment for me because I was hoping that the taillights would change. I don't think they've aged as well as pretty much the rest of the designs on the car. However, we may have a replacement or an omission of this backup light here at the bottom. We also have the same dual tip exhaust, not dual ex exhaust or centralized exhaust like you see on uh, you know, the outgoing Honda Civic or the 918 Porsche, for example. Now, if we look at the blinker at the front fender, it does look like we have a little bit more indentation here, but it could just be the reflections. And this line that kind of accentuates the, the wheel arch that goes into the door looks a little bit more aggressive, more angular, especially with this line compared to the ND2. Now, looking at the RF to RF here, apples to apples, it doesn't look like the window line has been changed. Now, the antenna is on the opposite end of the car, but I think that's just going to depend on whether it's left-hand drive or right-hand drive. However, in this rendering, because its I don't believe this is an actual picture, I can see the steering wheel inside here. I can see the steering wheel inside on the left-hand drive vehicles for both of them. So maybe on the rendering, they have the placement of the antenna on the right side of the car, and it looks like that antenna that I know some of you guys complain about is going to reprise its role, just sticking out in an awkward way. Okay, we have actually a better stitching together of the side profile of the new ND3 MX-5 and spotting the differences is going to be very, very difficult here. It does look like this portion over the blinker is a little bit more pointy, a little bit more indented, but it could be down to the lighting again. And I think what Moz is doing here, if you haven't caught onto the drift now, is they're teasing sides of the car that has had little to no differences between ND2 and ND3 or 2021 to 2022, for example. I think the differences are going to lie on the front end of the vehicle. And we'll zoom in to do our best to see if we can pick out any differences here. The lights could be a little bit more upgraded. And you see this like license plate holder thing sticking out in the, in the front here. We don't see that on this model. Doesn't mean it's not there. The camera angles are slightly different here. But the cutout here for the front bumper is seemingly quite different than this cutout right down here. So I think Mazda of Saudi Arabia is being a bit tricky here, teasing the new MX-5, showing the angles of the car that haven't changed. I think if there is going to be change, it is going to be up front. If you remember this render from Japan, a couple weeks ago we were talking about this, this could be some of the new design cues of the new MX-5. And at least from the side, it doesn't look to have this sort of fog light styling and aggressive front bumper. Maybe they changed the grill insert or something like that. But the ND3 is looking like a minor, 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 minor refresh at this point, at least from what we've seen. Maybe black glossy coated wheels on, on certain trims compared to more of the gunmetal finish we have on the Grand Touring, for example. Maybe they upgrade the screen size. They're not going to add touchscreen functionality because Mazda is just being a stick in the mud, kind of like Acura is on that end. I'm guessing we get some new interior options, new interior colors. Best case scenario, though, would be maybe a slight push in horsepower or torque on the Skyactiv G, not getting my hopes up for it. And maybe they make some more improvements and refinements to the shifter and the gearing. I think that's a possibility. Maybe some new refinements and options for the more performance packages like the Recaro and BBS package, stuff like that. We're not, I really don't expect to see a big engine change until this two liter Skyactiv X. 
uh, makes its debut in the MX-5 with the fifth generation MX-5. And that could be producing up to around 9, 190 horsepower, which isn't that much, but the torque is a lot different with 177 pound-feet of torque. It'll be able to pull from lower RPMs without having to downshift. We'll be getting a lot better fuel economy, which the MX-5 isn't the most ideal commuter car, but people do it and you get pretty good gas mileage and you should be able to get even better with this guy active x engine and of course that's going to mean it's a 24 volt mild hybrid and we're not going to see this until who knows when on the mx5 2025 2026 at this point that was my first time comparing the images what's been teased compared to what's already out there so i'm actually a little bit disappointed probably like you guys over that were expecting some more changes if there are changes maybe it's up front with the headlights a little bit and the front bumper design but from what I've seen, it looks like it's going to be the exact same design from the side and the rear. But speaking of fun cars, I wanted to share this. And we're not going to get this amazing vehicle. Even if it comes out, we're not going to get it here in America. So Toyota is working on a rear engine or mid-engine vehicle with Suzuki and Daihatsu. Pretty much Toyota vehicles, if you guys know how much Toyota owns of each of those companies. They're saying it's a one-liter vehicle. So this is a Suzuki. This is the Toyota variant. And this would be the Daihatsu variant. But this thing, oh my gosh, it reminds me of CRX times 10 because it would be even more fun than a CRX of back in the day. But it looks like that sort of size of vehicle. There's no way it would ever pass safety regulations here in America. So we'd have to import it 25 years later. And maybe even Toyota has a GR variant. They do have some more images for us, a little bit cleaner image here. This would not be the GR or the GR Sport variant, but it looks like a mini Lamborghini. I mean, how many people would be happy to spend, I don't know, 30 to 40K on this completely impractical but delicious little pocket rocket miniature Lambo slash miniature MR2 of the future that we probably won't be getting. And the rear look of it here just uh, gets gets my taste buds ready to take a bite out of this amazing drawing and render of uh, this potential mid-engine sports coupe. And since we're talking about fun cars, uh, let's talk about the Integra. No, I'm not going to go down the rabbit hole with you guys and complain about things because I'm happy that we have a new Integra. Anyways, Acura to push hard on EVs after all the Integra dust is settled, probably after even the Type S has come, in, come out, which is probably going to be a year, a year and a half from now. You got to remember the first Acura EV is going to be a rebadge of the Cadillac Lyric produced by General Motors. It's not going to be a real Honda as far as we're, we're aware, real Acura for that matter. But what's interesting is that Acura will lead Honda away from the combustion engine glory into the future of electrification. And Acura will skip the hybrid phase now going on at the Honda brand and instead go all in on battery electric vehicles, which is quite surprising. But after they canceled that their performance hybrids of the MDX, of the RLX, rest in peace RLX, uh, it does make sense that they would just skip hybrids and since they're a more performance minded brand, a more luxury like brand, they would just become fully electric. Not that much different than what Genesis is doing by 2025. And Emil Korkor, Assistant Vice President of Acura National Sales, told Automotive News, we're going to bypass hybrids altogether, so our shift is going very rapidly into battery electric vehicle. That's their main focus. Acura believes its EVs will represent more than half of its total volume by 2030. Let's say they maintain around 157,000 vehicles. So 75,000 vehicles by 20. 2030 per year in the United States are going to be electric Acuras. And after its initial collaboration with GM and their first EV, they'll have a new architecture called e-architecture. How witty of them. And that will make its debut in the second half of the decade. Corcor said Acura is well positioned to introduce electric vehicles at a moment when customers are less anxious about EV range and charging infrastructure. I mean... I can't blame him there. In the meantime, he says we need to solve range anxiety, charging stations, infrastructure in major cities, the cost of battery electric vehicles, and incentives available on the cars. Yeah, there's a lot of things these manufacturers have to battle against to make a case for bat an expensive battery electric vehicle that there aren't that many profits in at this point in time. They think their strategy is smart, more calculated, and partnering with GM it just makes it more efficient. And I agree as much as it makes me sick. And it's not like they're partnering with General Motors to produce Honda engines or anything like that. God forbid. They're like, well, EVs are inherently more reliable and we're not risking that much with 
partnering with their Ultium platform and batteries. There's an asterisk to that because the Bolt has been recalled massively. Somehow GM was able to swindle LG Chem, who was a producer of the batteries, to take the blunt, like 90% of the billion dollar cost it is to produce all those Bolt battery replacements. I think there's something fishy going on under the table there. And LG Chem is their partner for Ultium. It's General Motors and LG Chem. So hopefully they have that reliability crap figured out by 2024, 2025, when we see these Ultium batteries be put into Honda and Acura vehicles. Only time will tell on that. But guys, I'm gonna end it there. See you down below in the comments. Sorry about the ND3, I was pretty excited, but from what we've seen, the exterior is gonna have little to no changes. And now the big question mark is, why have a refresh at this point if it doesn't seem to be that different? at all but anyways guys but if you haven't smashed the like button go and do that subscribe if you're not for more japanese korean auto news catch you in the next one peace out <music>